What is going on guys DBG here and today we are going to be going over the best small forwards well only primary small forwards in NBA 2k20 on my team before we get on to it if you guys are new to the channel subscribe we are trying to hit 250 thousand subscribers by the end of the month right now we are about we are a little bit over this we are about like 30 we're about 100 above this so we're about 1350 ish away it's going to be very very close we need like 4000 or 249,000 by tomorrow but yeah tomorrow we're on track but either way not the end of the world i do just really appreciate all the support on the channel recently so anyway this position sucks the primary small forward position absolutely sucks. So, guys that have not made this list, but we're close to making it. Pages to Jakovic, Rick Barry, Kelly Oubre, Sean Marion, Jack Marin, Pink Diamond Paul George was in consideration. That's how bad this position is. Granger was in consideration. And the crazy thing is, Amethyst Will Barton with his six Hall of Fame badges, was in consideration. This is a bad position, lads. If you're playing, like if you're, if you're using a primary small forward, and it's not one of the top like three guys in this list, trust me, just just don't use them. There's just no point. So um, yeah. Anyway, that is basically just a heads up that this list is going to be shockingly, shockingly bad. The primary small forward position is horrendous because all of the good small forwards in real life are primary power forwards. The likes of um, Rudy, um, Karolenko, Tatum, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, they are all prime. None of them are primary small forwards. So, number 10, Paul Pierce. Is Paul Pierce good? Uh, he's all right. He's all right. He'll be... If he can play at the two on current gen, he'd be okay. Because his release is good. The problem is he just can't shoot from the corners. Which is quite a bit of a problem if you're playing at the small forward position. It's not nearly as much of a problem if you're playing power forward. I will say that if you are playing at the power forward position... It's not power forward if you're playing at the two guy. If you're playing small forward or power forward, you're going to spot him in the corner most of the time. In any sort of five out or four out one in setting. So it is quite a bit of a problem having him... Um, having him at those positions, he's got half range extender, not any speed, which I mean, it's all right, but he's not not particularly fast. If you're saying, oh, 90 speed is really fast, I mean, he's he's, he's slower than Matt Bonner, so at this stage, it's really not great. And um, the problem is that his, it's a jump shot; it really is. His handle's pretty decent. He has curry slide. Quick dribble style, good defensive badges, everything's good. His jump shots is really, really slow on current gen. Oh, sorry, on next gen. The current gen, he can't shoot from the corners. So, Paul Pierce is in here at number 10. Number 9, we've got Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler was the first Galaxy Opal in packs, and there was a stage where he was like 250k, and I was just like, he is one of the worst value guys in the game. 17 halves. So, he's got the half badges of a current Amethyst. Um, he's got 92 speed, 92 acceleration, 93 pointer. He's got a 90 driving dunk as well, 96 lateral quickness. Problem is his badges. And he's doing a goal range, goal clamps. Yes, he's half quick for a step, but he's missing a lot of key badges. Half intimidator is good. You get good uh, the curry slide, base 22 on quick. Jimmy's a decent card. I mean, I think when we get a better Jimmy Butler, the problem was last year, I'm convinced Jimmy Butler, I'm pretty confident Jimmy Butler was 6'8. I need to check that. I need to check with Jimmy Butler last year. Last year he was six foot eight, and being six foot eight and being six foot seven, there's a little bit of a difference. So I think when we get a better, when we get a dark matter or a second better opal Jimmy Butler, he could be quite good. Like I reckon, you update some of these badges, he does get good animations. Jimmy will be decent, but this card here is not great. At number eight, we got Detlef. We got what? It, I'm still gonna say it, he's the best primary power small forward on next gen. He stinks on current gen. He has got one of the best releases in the game in Gallo. And he has got half blinders. Got range, got half quick for a step, gold clamps, got speed slower than Bonner. 89 lateral quickness. Can't really dunk the ball. I mean he's chicken. He can curry slide. He's six foot nine. 
He can carry his line on both ends, and he's got a really good release. Like, that's about it. Gallo base. Gallo base on quick, curry sliding, and the ability to hit the three-pointers um, when he's open. He was a lot higher on my other lists, and that was because he was kind of like, he was actually good on next-gen, because there weren't that many, like, really good a month ago. Really good, half-blinders, curry sliding, small forwards, or power forwards, or two and two guys that could play a small forward. There's a lot of them now, and really, I don't think he's he's up to much. I really don't think that Tramp is up to much at all anymore on either gen. Then, at number seven, we got Andre Iguodala. So, I'm not high on him, mainly because I hate his release. But Iggy's... I mean, of the cards we've seen so far, it's hard to not say Iggy's by far the best on current gen. 6'6", six, six, he's got a long wingspan. He's got really good speed, really good defense, half showtime slash posterizer. And like, I was normally like, you know what, posterizer doesn't really mean too much on next gen. Maybe it's just with the con, maybe it's just me with the context, but since I've started using a whole bunch of guys with posterizer, they dunk on everybody. They dunk on everybody. So I think showtime's a key badge on next gen. Maybe it's placebo, and if it is placebo, I do apologize, but it feels like it's massive. Ugly gold range for Iggy, which isn't great. But if you look at the defense, he's got 14 defensive badges, Hall of Fame. Although, I do have to bring this up. He has got two less Hall of Fame defensive badges than Kyle Kuzma. But um, he's still got the curry slide. I release on quick. A decent mind back in current gen. I mean, I hate him. Doesn't mean he's objectively bad. But um, yeah, he's number seven. At number six, we have got Diamond Sean Elliott. I like this card, but he's not that much better than Iguodala. He's got a half range extender. He's got a bunch of half defense badges. Doesn't have that many goal badges, like only 36 total badges. His speed's a little low, but I mean, base 29 on quick is, is chicken. He's like a significantly better Danny Granger. He's like Granger with better badges, a better really, or um, Granger with better badges um, and Curry slide and a better behind the back in between the legs. He's also six foot eight, so he's got really good length of that two guard position. And I don't know. If you just need a three and D cone, I think he's really good. Is he better in most situations than Iguodala? Nope. But is he a better shooter, Niggy? Yes. Is he a better on ball defender, Niggy? In my opinion, yes, but it's close. So I'm gonna put Sean Elliott in here at number five. Mainly because of how easy he is to get compared to like the 30, 50, 50k at least Iguodala is. But at the end of the day, um, this is my channel and I'm always going to be free slash cheap card, free slash easy to get card bias. And that's why, why Sean Elliott's a little bit headache with Iguodala. But like, honestly, in game, yes, you get 10 extra half badges on Iggy. There is no way that you can say that Iggy's significantly better. But um, and number five. I mean, I'm still putting the dentist at number five. I, I think I like him. I like the card. 93 three ball, 93 speed, 93 acceleration. 94 primitive defense, 94 lock breaks, 95 driving dunk, half range extender, only goal clamps, but again, clamps is one of the most overrated badges in the game. You, can, you can't you can survive with no clamps, but I mean, half versus goal clamps is no difference. He's got half intimidator, he's got Rudy on quick, curry slide, um, and a decent crossover. Like, I still to this day think Terry Dishinger is more than usable online. Does he make my team? No. Is he even close to being on my team? No, but he's still good. He's still, still good. Do I regret playing 900 games for him? I do and I don't. Like, I do because I spent way too much time getting him. I don't regret going for him because it was funny. Those breakdown videos were funny because they were like, there was partial truth in them. Like, obviously, any of those like breakdown videos for Terry, you weren't pretending to, um, to have a mental breakdown while getting the card. Obviously, there is... Um, that's just acting up for, acting for the camera, but there was partial truth in it, which made it even kind of funnier. And it became like a running meme joke amongst the community that you just I just couldn't get Terry. Or it happened with multiple of us that were playing hundreds and hundreds of games and we just couldn't get Terry. So it was a funny thing situation, but man, it was it was too long. But Terry's still good. Terry's still really, really good. So he is in here at number five. And number four, we have Carmelo Anthony. I don't like the card. I don't even care that he's got half blinders. I can't get open with him. 
I've tried using them on next gen. I can't get open at all with Carmelo Anthony. Pro 1, normally I'm not bad with the Pro 1 escape, but when you combine the Pro 1 escape with the slasher dribble style, he just can't get open. He can hit, he's a really good catch and shoot player. Like if you want a player to play some sort of, he doesn't even get good defensive animations on current gen. So no one plays defense in next gen. If you want a cone, if you want someone to play like Antoine Jameson, like Antoine Jameson, the way he used to play, Melo is like a completely juiced up version of him. Melo, really, really fast, range extender, steady, slash blinders. He's the best sharp shooter in, in, on next gen. But I mean, you're paying 400k for a guy who's a sharp shooter. You're paying 400k for a guy who has less of a varied offensive game than Kyle Korver. Kyle Korver is a better dribbler, better shot creator, a better dunker than this Carmelo Anthony in on next gen on current gen man this mellows just not it he can't shoot from the corners his release is meh and he can't curry anyway but like you're paying 400k for a guy who's not half as good as a kuzma so he's in here at number four at number three cedric maxwell i really like i didn't go for cedric maxwell but if you did go from about halfway through his season was when the spmm came in so a lot of people got him early but he's got Half showtime, only gold range, but he's got half clamps. Again, not the biggest deal in the world. Where it's half or gold. 95 speed, 95 acceleration, only an 85 three ball. Up base three, which is a really, really quick release. A bit awkward on um, current gen. The power dribble, or on next gen, the power dribble style, which is very, very awkward on next gen. Again, I've played again. I've never used them on next gen. I only played against them. He's he's alright, but I've used him on current gen. He was really, really good. Again, his defense is what sets him apart. Whereas he's like a very good defender on current gen. Melo's not a good defender. I will say Melo offers more on next gen than Maxwell. But uh, I just I just think Maxwell's so much better on current gen that I'm going to put him one ahead. At number two, we got Wiggins. I really like, I think Wiggins is just a slightly better Cedric Maxwell. Like a little bit higher three ball. They've got very, very comparable badges. They're very, very comparable height. Obviously, Maxwell's got a bit longer wingspan. Um, I think Wiggins is a much better release on next gen than Maxwell. Again, a bad dribble style for next gen. But I like him. I like him. I think he's got a really, really good length. He's a good spot up shooter. He plays decent defense. He plays lanes well. And he can actually, even with the slasher dribble style with the curry slide and stuff, you can ISO a little bit with him. Like, is there some, like, cheap player bias why I'm going for Wiggins over Carmelo Anthony? Maybe. Maybe. Like, if you want to argue Melo over, Melo should be in the position Wiggins is in right now. I will say, you know what? You may be correct. I have him a four, and I think there's definitely bias against that because he's, like, 400k. Or I have no idea what price he is now. He might be 200k now, but the last time I looked at Carmelo Anthony, he was 400. And even at 200k, he's still stupidly overpriced for a guy who is bad on current gen. The only thing you can do on next gen is catch and shoot. And is so expensive because his name is Carmelo Anthony. But Wiggins, I think, offers that a little bit more. He runs the floor a little bit better, in my opinion. He just gets better animations. Um, Carmelo Anthony, he's just not it. And number one, Justice Winslow. And I don't think it's close. You have to apply handles for days for Justice Winslow. 6,000 MT. The card costs 10k. He's 15k to get him with handles for days. But you're look, you need to look at the key attributes. Justice Winslow, 6, 7, 6, 10 wingspan. He also has the best secondary position of all of these at point guard. He has got a 93 ball, a 90 driving dunk. Again, anything above 85 is almost the same in driving dunk. It's like ball handle. You want it to be as high as possible, but at the end of the day, the gap between 86 to 89 to 99 is smaller than the gap between 86 to 85. It's the same with driving dunk. The gap between 85 to 99 is smaller than the gap between 84 to 85. So that's a one big thing. 95 lateral quickness. All of these half defensive bodies, like dude's got nine half defensive bodies. Half quick first step, half range, half flexible, half catch and shoot. I'm looking at key badges that he doesn't have. He doesn't have like deep fades. Yeah, you, you might want clutch shooter. Like deep hooks worthless now. Pick and roll are worthless. Back to your cross key score, worthless. Flashy pass here. Handles for days is the only badge that matters that he doesn't have. It's the only badge that matters. Maybe you want to give him bronze bailout and bronze stop and go or something. But like, 
especially as a, as a wing player or point guard, really doesn't matter. And you look at his animations. He has the best escape. Quick dribble style. Base 20 on very quick. And I'm telling you, Scalabrini on very quick is cash. And the Pro 3 moving behind the back, which is the best behind the back in the game. I don't think it's particularly close. I think the only one that I would even consider using in my team out of all the primary small forwards is Justice Winslow. And I have backed that up by the fact that I use Justice Winslow in my team. Um, he is in my main squad for next gen. I think on current gen, he is even better than he is on next gen. So yeah, that is pretty much it. In terms of just overall impact, if you want to argue um, Carmelo Anthony over Cedric Maxwell and Wiggins, I'm not going to complain. I, like you do you, I just think that these guys are a little bit better. They're better for me. But I think we all should be in agreement that Justice Winslow is the best primary small forward in the game. And I don't think it's close. I think the gap between... The first two aren't great. The gap between Iguodala and Wiggins is smaller than the gap between Wiggins slash Melo slash Maxwell and Justice Winslow. I think he's by far the best of them all. So, uh, as a recap, at number 10, Paul Pierce. Number 9, Jimmy Butler. Number 8, Dell of Shrimp. Number 7, Andre Iguodala. Number 6, Sean Elliott. Number 5, Terry Dishinger. Number 4, Kamal Anthony. Number 3, Cedric Maxwell. Number 2, Andrew Wiggins. And number 1, Justice Winslow. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.